a slave apostolic preacher. My mother was an apostolic preacher. So I come from a line of preachers in my family. I preached my trial sermon at the age of 16 in Andrews, South Carolina. Amen. Um, I served on the board of Eden Bible College board of directors from 1988 to 2004. I was asked during my tenure to do a teaching in California on God's high call or calling. I could not conclude the teaching without adding God's women in the call, which ended up being a book, Preach, Woman, Preach. That book is there. And to those of you that would like it, there is a discount. Now, <laughs> uh, my friends, my friends who are in heaven now and I have got together and we've talked many days about this day. My friend, Dr. Lula Jackson, my friend, Dr. Lottie Glenn. I want you to know that um, God's place for women in ministry, absolutely. Absolutely. In the Old Testament, Ruth, Esther, Deborah, Miriam, great women that made a great contribution to uh, God. Now, God has called and anointed women as leaders in his ministry through the history of the church. It's very clear. God called women his daughters. And I do want you to know that God's daughters are sons of God too. The full use of these gifts are oftentimes limited and made, think, made of thinking that, and a mode of thinking that keeps scores of women from the use of their spiritual gift today. Uh, those permitted to be used in their full potential have made a great influence, phenomenal. However, many stories of women in ministry are little known, and partly because most histories have been written by men who, because of their cultural, theological condition, their understanding, they assume that women have no um, important role in ministry in the church today. But God's word clearly states that he has made room, and he's called women in ministry, to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, um, the Holy Ghost came to empower the church. And I have experienced breakthrough. God has allowed us to transcend barriers of secularism, cultural patterns, segregation, sexism, and all of the isms. Ah. Uh, that divide old and young, male and female, rich and poor. That is why Peter on the day of Pentecost declared that with boldness, he quoted that of prophet Joel. In the last days, it shall come, uh, last days, it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and sons and daughters shall Profita, preach, prophesy. Now that eliminates, eliminates race, discrimination, eliminates sex, discrimination, eliminates class upon servants, slaves, and handmaids. The Apostle Paul emphatically restates Joel's prophecy about the coming of the Holy Ghost. And then Galatians 3, 26 and 29, through 29, for you are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And let me say that although Peter preached that sermon on the day of Pentecost,
Peter still had a problem with discrimination. God had to give him a vision before he went to Cornelius' house. According to St. Luke, Jesus included women among the inner circle of his disciples. Yes. These women were also taught the truth of the gospel. Jewish women were not permitted to study the Old Testament. They were the first evangelist in the gospel is a woman. Remember the woman at the well? Mm -hmm. Jesus had a conversation with her. Although it was not customary for a rabbi, rabbi to talk to a woman, any woman in public, including his wife. Jesus also permitted Mary to take her place at his feet as a disciple and allowed her to neglect for a little while her normal womanly duties. And so women were the first witnesses of Jesus for the resurrection. <laughs> the Bible said that in the angel of God and Jesus himself gave women an assignment because Matthew 28 and 7 clearly says, go quickly and tell. So that means, brothers and sisters, go and announce, make known, declare, Jesus is risen from the dead. I would say that's the most important message in the world. And in keeping with Jewish customs, and attitudes toward women, the disciples did not believe the woman. They considered her message idle, a tale. But Jesus deliberately chose to reveal himself first to a woman. I wonder why. <laughs> Many men still don't believe, but Jesus still gives messages to his daughters because of tradition, lack of knowledge, lack of faith in the power of God, some apostolics in their marginalization and culture don't accept women. Now, the woman Mary sat at Jesus' feet, as I've stated, and her posture was just like the disciples. Okay, the tug of war question. What did Paul mean in 1 Timothy 2, mm -hmm. 12, 14? But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to use of authority over the man. But be in silence, for Adam was first formed, then Eve, and Adam was deceived. Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in transgression. What does he mean? Brothers and sisters, this was not preachers. This was not the church. Adam and Eve was husband and wife. And Adam was certainly created first. The Bible said Adam and Eve were both made in the image and likeness of God. Now, so, uh, so the Bible tells us that inasmuch as we are made in the same image and likeness, it does not give women the authority to be the hand in the home, to make decisions over her husband, that's in the home. We're talking about women in ministry here. They were not in ministry. We know the Proverbs said, first one and eight, my son, be in, uh, receive the instruction of your father, forsake not the law of your mother. We're not, we, we, we're husband and wives. In my, in my situation, my husband is the head of his house, his home. My husband makes the major decisions, and if I don't agree, we talk about it, and the final decision is made by my husband. But at church, as Dr. Johnny James said on yesterday, if I say, let's pray, my husband's position is, how long? <laughs> So Timothy was giving, a, uh, Paul was giving advice to Timothy. Then he says in 1 Corinthians 14, 34, let your women keep silence 